Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as people are trickling in, um, we'll get started here. Um, good afternoon and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. As many of you know, Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme and this month's theme is Precision Ag. And on today's call, we are joined by Nicholas Adamendi, uh, CEO of AWA. AWA is developing agriculture-based imagery analysis tools to analyze, predict, and model crop behavior for the plant breeding industry. The company combines field information and data knowledge management within a simple and reliable framework in order to speed up product development cycles and accelerate time to market for a range of ag products. AWA services deliver valuable genotypic and phenotypic information to clients for seed and agrochemical R&D to reduce data capture costs and considerably improve accuracy. We've invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in AWA's market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company to AWA, or you are a sophisticated business person or ag professional who understands the market and the challenges and opportunities that AWA may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take just a moment to answer. And a few process comments. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help AWA find customers, mentors, or other strategic relationships. Secondly, you are all on mute. However, you can use the Q&A window to ask a question at any time, and we'll have a dedicated time for Q&A at the end, during which you can ask a question in the Q&A pane, or you can raise your hand and we will unmute you so you can ask Nicholas a question directly. Finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I am pleased to introduce Nick Adamendi of AWA. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much, Tom and everybody for participating today. Yeah, it's a Pleasure to be here and have you uh, this uh, block of time to present on AWA and what the company does. Um, so, my name is Nicolas Otamendi. I am co founder and CEO of AWA. AWA started six years ago. The company focuses on delivering technology to um, farm input ecosystem. Every single company out there today, um, from the multinationals to large agriculture, uh, farm input and distributors uh, companies are facing the big challenge of going through digital transformation. From our beginning, we uh, detected the need of uh, and the challenge of internal digital transformation for these large players in the market and the importance of starting by internally adopting technology tools and digitizing processes to then have impact on the ecosystem as a whole and for the farmers. So um, what, we, what we are doing today is accompanying and delivering platform services to farm input providers to digitize their research development and go-to-market processes, in particular around field and trial digitization. And for them, having these internal processes digitized, it's then much easier to provide digital services to the farmers. Um, our vision is to be a global partner of the uh, farm input ecosystem. Uh, if we look at the company today, 70% of our commercial activities in the US, and then we have the, rema the remaining percentage in Brazil and Argentina, we are digitizing 90% um, of the soybean genotypes globally, uh, doing a lot of work in breeding and moving beyond that towards crop protection and crop nutrition research and development. Um, the, there's a key role in digitizing these trials, and that is not only 
improving the quality of the research and development of the farm inputs, but throughout the uh, R&D process that, of these farm inputs, enabling our customers to develop digital services that will be launched with a new farm input when uh, that farm input reaches the commercial stage. And those digital services, typically predictive models or business intelligence um, services around the applications of those farm inputs, that um, uh, belong and are proprietary to our customers. We enable and give them tools for them to accelerate the digital transformation process, eventually enabling them to be more efficient in new farm input R&D and more efficient in delivering their own digital services to farmers in the industry. Um, so how do we see this process today? Um, all companies are transitioning from product-centered, looking at physical input towards farming solutions, where there is the physical inputs themselves, plus digital services that act as early alerts, recommendation or predict predictive analytics for farmers. And they're looking uh, to their internal processes to um, build or develop better farm inputs, but also how to um, put them into a uh, integrated solution, including digital services. Tech availability is going up. Every year there's new sensors out there coming out. Um, there's new data feeds from satellite and IoT available. The challenge today is how to organize all of that data in a context that enables the agronomists and data scientists working for farm input developers and distributors to enable them to interpret that data and um, De develop these new uh, digital services and, and predictive models. So that's, that's pretty much in a nutshell what we're doing today. AY is digitizing, for example, um, entire research and development programs in the US for companies such as Syngenta, BASF, um, Stein, and other significant players uh, that are digitizing trials and using these platforms to uh, study the farm inputs and develop new predictive models for them. What are the basic dynamics that we see when you look at the core of the, of the problems that they have out there? There's a growing number of farm inputs tested globally. For these companies to remain competitive, they need to test more products in, a, in order to um, find the top performing one that added to um, the complexity and the amount of data that needs to be gathered from each one of these products makes it a real challenge to gather uh, quality data on all of these programs. Um, most of the breeders globally are targeting to increment by 10x the number of plots that they manage every year. So the techniques that they use today really need to evolve, uh, taking advantage of digital uh, products and services to gather that information. And finally, organizing all of this data into a platform that enables them to do additional marketing and sales services, after aftermarket services, um, and have the, the proper uh, data support. So no more Excels in the future for managing trial data. Um, and really starting to take advantage of the, 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 the full uh, range of IoT and sensors and, and data uh, uh, sources that there's out there. In our platform, we have three basic um, modules, uh, layers. Number one, we integrate with a number of sensors that uh, are of value to extract agronomic information on the crops. Um, so today, you know, you can digitize a trial from a mobile app. UAVs are widely used because of the resolution they have today. 
sensors mounted on existing mach machinery, uh, field rovers and robots that gather that information all the way to satellite data and weather feeds. Um, once that information is gathered and ingested, you can manage, and this is a really important part of the, of the, of the problem today, you can manage all of that data in the context of the nomenclature of our customers themselves. When you look at these global players, having an API handshake between their internal databases and our databases is critical because of the volume of data. So we have multiple API services that connect directly to their platform. And it makes it really easy for them to either accessing our platform or their internal database to see the same regional names, field names, trial names, and eventually plot specific nomenclature that maps one-to-one -to, -one to what they have on their system. And finally, the data analytics portion. AWA has a number of um, image processing algorithms and, um, and crop models that operate on this digital data, but most importantly, enabling our customers to deploy their own crop models and uh, image processing analytics on the platform itself so that they can have data scientists and agronomists directly working on the most value add activities, which is around how to turn those data points into valuable insights and digital services. And all of this needs to be considered in the current context of the ecosystem. Farm input companies don't work by themselves. There's ag service providers that do services for them on the field from planting to harvesting and taking notes. There's third party algorithm developers and data scientists from universities that have their own projects in conjunction with the farm input developers and retailers. Um, and even there's uh, drone service providers that work that are outside of the farm input. So managing access to the data, managing functionality of the platform, enabling all of these third parties to be able to dump or put into the platform their, their, their efforts is key. Um, just a little bit here on, on a, a bit more detail. Um, when you look at the actual uh, uh, modules within the platform, everything's hosted on the web. We use AWS for uh, ensuring scalability on storage and processing needs as the customer needs, um, needs it. And in terms of the platform, when we talk about management, we're talking about uh, um, gathering and processing um, the data and having an algorithm repo repository that's both for AWA and for, for uh, the proprietary models of, of the, the customers. Um, so that's a little bit the, the, the context and, and the overall value proposition of AWAS technology. Moving into some of the specific features, um, the, the platform has three um, basic processes where uh, it's used throughout the season. Season planning, season execution, and season analysis. Now, when you look at the challenges of the farm input providers and developers, um, you really need to organize end-to-end -end all of these activities. So for example, um, throughout the planning uh, stage of the process, enabling them to um, group trials and fields into a program and assign particular uh, data acquisition protocols and data processing protocols to that group is critical. And managing that and, and understanding that um, there's 150 trials that will undergo this data gathering protocol. And that ensures that when the time of analysis comes, you have a standardized database for all of these trials um, that come from digital sensors. So planning the season is really important. That's called the data subscription uh, service that we have. 
Um, the, the other important point is uh, throughout the execution of the season, being able to track progress on data acquisition. And so there's uh, a number of features around this particular uh, item where as users upload data into the platform that could be gather data from an iPhone application or upload um, UAV imagery, the operations manager can keep track of how that is progressing and look at the uploads and have, uh, in this case, they can see that there were seven surveys done. Uh, it has been some time since the last survey was performed on that particular field. Um, and uh, the last time, uh, the, the last day of the flight. So again, for large trialing programs, this becomes really important because it's key to standardize both data acquisition activities and the data quality that's obtained itself. Um, once the data is uploaded throughout the execution uh, of the season, uh, the, every single data point that's uploaded can be visualized in a GIS, um, in a GIS uh, it, on the platform. And uh, everything is uh, overlaid with a plot extraction grid that you'll be able to see. So they don't need, the users don't need to do anything in terms of assigning plots to specific uh, GIS layers. They simply upload the, G the GIS layer and AWA locates each specific plot within that and overlays the different, um, the different GIS layers. In this case, um, satellite data with a UAV um, mosaic itself. Now, what's interesting uh, is that you have this seamless connection between the GIS layers the grid overlaying each trial and the raw data on spreadsheets. You can basically click on the plot and that brings you directly to the data records that exist on that particular plot. One of the, the key things here is for trials that have been subscribed to multiple data services, what you'll see is you'll see the plot name or plot nomenclature in the first column and the multiple subscribed data services associated to that trial in the same spreadsheet in a way that it cannot be edited by users. It's important to keep complete integration between their database and ours. So um, that organizes that all of the data fields that will be um, acquired throughout the season, and you can see the raw data as well as the, the images. Um, as the data is processed, you can see here in this case, there's uh, five data services that were performed on this trial. The algorithms that are uh, hosted on the platform start processing the images and saving the data on these unified spreadsheets. And you can see both the actual value from the processed image, as well as the GIS processed layer to have a visual recognition of potential problems in the field. The, the type of layers that we accept on the platform go from UAV RGB images, which is conventional imaging to NDVI or uh, multispectral indices that, that can be um, used um, to process the, uh, from, from the actual uh, multispectral images. So um, that's, that's uh, really important for some of the crop models that are associated to near infrared um, indices. Um, moving towards the, the analysis part of the season, um, once data acquisition has finished, the users can upload themselves other data, such as yield data, into 
columns of that unified spreadsheet, enabling them to concentrate all of the data in a single spot so that um, it's accessible and easily um, managed and, uh, from, from, from a single place. Um, and finally, downloading this data both from the platform itself, as well as connecting through an API and pushing that into the customer's database that's done really easily um, on the season analysis stage of the process. Many companies have specialized software for analyzing results such as PRISM or ARM. In both cases, this enables them to just um, gather the data and input that into these third-party softwares. Um, so if you, if you look at the process end to end, Customers start the season populating the platform with all of the trials that they might, might manage on a, an entire country or several countries. They decide on what data they want from all of these different uh, trials. They, they can assign those data protocols to all of the, the, the trials. As the season progresses, they upload data. It's processed and agronomic traits are extracted um, and populating this Excel sheet. And then this can be used for analysis that improves the research and development processes of the companies, as well as sharing with potential customers uh, where they can see performance data that comes from actual GIS layers uh, that support that specific data. So in short, when we look at uh, platform functionality, we're looking at um, incrementing the quality of the data, no longer relying on field visits to extract plot data, in particular in very large programs that have millions of plots. Um, it's critical to maintain high quality data, centralizing the information so that it's accessible for R&D purposes or go to market purposes. Uh, so that you can share the product performance with the customers. And it's a business intelligent framework for our customers for them to develop their own crop models and algorithms to eventually introduce those crop models into other platforms that they may have facing farmers. So we don't, our intention is not to be the the platform that does everything for farmers, but rather the kitchen where all of these models are built and then enabling the connection between our platform and other existing platforms that serve farmers directly. So that's, um, that's pretty much the, the um, synthesis of AWAS products and services. We, we have been very active in, in, in the three main geographies for agriculture for the past uh, five, six years, um, have had uh, the Yield Lab as, a, as an investor in AWA and uh, are uh, quickly moving along in, in, in growing the business. Um, that's, I think with that, Tom, we have the, the initial portion of presenting the, the services and what we do. Fantastic. Thank you, Nick, for uh, walking us through and congrats on the progress. Um, so now we have some time for Q&A and, and we can go about this in a couple of ways. Um, the attendees can either raise their hand and we can unmute you and you can ask Nick a question directly or feel free to uh, type a question in the, the Q&A pane. Um, so as, as the attendees are thinking about some possible questions, Nick, I'm, I'm wondering if you can talk about to the extent you can, just kind of a, a case study. I'm interested in kind of the, the length of engagement and kind of the ideal customer and product set for your data sets. Um, and I feel like a case study might might help there to the extent you can share whatever details you can about, about kind of ideal uh, circumstances that, that make a good customer. Sure. Um, two case studies come to mind just to cover sort of the, the both ends of, of what we serve. On one end, a breeding case study, and on the other end, a crop protection more uh, intended towards um, 
marketing and sales uh, side of the business. So when we talk about breeding, you have companies such as Syngenta or Stein or GDM and BASF that manage 2 million, 3 million plots every year. These are small plots with a specific, unique soybean genotype uh, planted into a, a, a four rows by nine feet or 15 feet of, of land. Um, and every year they used to have, you know, 60, 100 people going into the field, gathering the very basic data they really needed to gather because, because they relied on manual processes. You, you just had to choose, you know, the, the one or two or three times you could go to the field and uh, to, to gather the data. And so they went out there, you had 60 different visions on the same trait that was acquired with subjective data quality coming out from, uh, from that process. Many people doing this at the same time and uh, uh, clearly a deficient process uh, that could be optimized. So uh, within two or three years for many of these companies, they stopped relying on manual observations for these plots and uh, started flying UAVs throughout the season to replace the notes that they were gathering today and going beyond. Now that you can gather millions of data points with a couple of flights, um, you can really gather many more phenotypic data to improve the selection process. And so first, avoiding sending people on the field and incrementing data quality of what you were gathering at that point. Second, gathering more data on existing plots. And the third stage that we're seeing today in customers they're realizing they can have many, many more plots. They can go after two, three, five, ten x the number of plots because they don't rely on data acquisition. And so that's really digital transformation all the way through, from starting from an initial benefit to looking at it on a uh, on a different scale for the breeding side. So um, the the customers I mentioned actually went through that process and 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 are uh, are. Um, are clearly on, on that path. On the crop protection side and on the sales and marketing side, it's a little bit different. You're not talking about millions of plots, but you are talking about um, dozens or hundreds of trial sites with very few plots. And these plots are critical for two things. From a product placement perspective, understanding what's the best region where my fungicide is going to work. And from a go-to-market perspective, understanding, uh, showing the value of the product performance to farmers that live within that region. And so we had the case where, you know, we evaluated these trials and trial sites, digitized the information and customers gathering um, the data uh, with a certain standard and then making it really easy for them to share product performance with the farmers that were on, on the other side. And that, that, that uh, part of particular interest in, for example, regions like Brazil, where uh, there's a lot of um, uh, regional specific uh, crop problems like fungicides or herbicides and, and really having a imagery record of, of the performance of the product and being able to share that with one click with uh, farmers, help them with their product launch uh, campaign. Great, thank you. Um, looks like we have a question from LXELLES. -E um, they ask, can AWA handle the scale of large ag businesses, i.e. thousands of land plots, thousands of units of equipment, provide automated analytics and reporting, rankings, et cetera? Is it all cloud AWS based? It's 100% cloud based, based on AWS. So we're using anywhere from the basic AWS services like S3 um, to the more advanced SageMaker and other uh, AI analytics tools from AWS. So um, that, that's, um, that has been really important because it's really easy to scale on demand. In terms of scale, I would say we, from the beginning of AWA, we found very niche specific pain points 
And very quickly, customers starting to ask more and more. Uh, today, last season, I think we, we served anywhere between four and five million plots flown an average of 10 times. Um, so that's 40 million, 50 million uh, specific plot cutouts. Um, and we're doing this with 15 to 30 pilots for each one of the large scale organizations we work with. And that's why we, there had to be focused on season planning and API integration with some of these global players. Without season planning, API integration and on the, on the execution side, without having a view of the progress of how data is gathered and made available, they could, they, they, it was really hard to handle, you know, thousands, thousands of trial sites and millions of plots going through this digitalization process. So I would say that's one of our strong suits uh, in terms of scalability. Great. Thank you, Nick. And thank you for the question. Um, Nick, can you talk a little bit about your business model and, um, you know, are, are customers paying per module? Is it a, is it just a subscription business? And, and also wondering kind of how sticky is it? Um, after a, a certain trial, do you find, you know, there's a lot of attrition? Uh, talk, talk a little bit about kind of um, willingness for customers to, to re-up and continue to engage the product with similar products that they're in development sure. on. Sure. Um, so in terms of the business model, it's a uh, software as a self service uh, platform where uh, annual license is paid for. There's different layers for this annual license. Basic layer is gathering and organizing information for the number of plots. Uh, we, we charge per field or per plot, depending if it's uh, breeding where you have millions of plots or development for crop protection or seed development um, uh, or, or, or marketing demos where the variable of number of fields is more important or number of trials. Um, so the number will determine pricing and then the amount of functionality you access for those plots or trials is the other vector. The initial layer is organizing the data, being able to update data, look at it per plot, per trial, download that data. And the second layer is uh, business intelligence analytics. So process that data and uh, gather value add agronomic traits or mounting your, your own crop, uh, crop models on top of the platform. So that would be a second layer of value add. Um, that's basically the, the, the licensing, licensing model, mostly um, the, the, the typical um, onboarding process for a multinational or a large customer is a three-year process. First year, they test quality of the data that's acquired and, and the quality of, of georeferencing and, and identifying the plots. Second year, they test scalability, perhaps going after 30% of the program. Can you handle 30, flight, 30 pilots? Can you handle you know, millions of plots and, and, and thousands of trials? And third year is full-scale implementation, typically finalizing with multi-year contracts for, for these companies where they just want to um, ensure that the service is provided through for the next uh, three years. Um, so that, that's the typical use case. Uh, the, the degree of attrition has been uh, very low, uh, in, especially on the breeding side. Um, all of the customers that I mentioned, we work with for the past five, six years, and are continuing to work with us and actually culminated in, in multi-year contracts. And um, uh, in a few cases, the biggest multinationals or global players um, do have internal initiatives and we've had both things, right? They, they wanna develop things that, that, uh, by themselves. Some of them are successful. Some of them come around and say, hey, it's more efficient for us to outsource. So in that case, I would say that, that sometimes we've had some attrition. Um, on the breeding side, we've been very successful and we've been active in the last year, year and a half in uh, opening up the um, 
marketing demo plots and development demo uh, plots and i'd say that's where we're putting much of our effort in terms of product development and, and roadmap um, so there's still some uh, uh, there's there's still work for us and, and years of um, track record uh, for us to go through in, in, in those segments. Great. Thank you, Nick. Um, I guess last question would be, so you have your, your email here. Um, how can the, the people in attendance and, and those who listen after the fact uh, help you out? Okay, so... Um, First of all, the, because there was a last minute change on the speaker, my partner um, had, a, had, had to ask me to step in. Um, I can see there's a typo on the email. So it's, it should be instead of M, it's N Otamendi um, from Nick, uh, just in case. Um, sorry about that. Uh, it, yes. Thank you for offering the, the space to ask for help, because it's always important for us to reach out and, and ask for help. Number one, um, of course, anybody who's interested on services or uh, evaluating, just talking about digital transformation and, and sharing experience on digital transformation, we're more than happy to host that conversation and, and exchange ideas. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, uh, uh, to end up in, in buying a service, but for us just exchanging around uh, you know, we, we worked with many companies that underwent digital transformation, and we, I, I think we have a very in-depth knowledge of what that looks like for global players and, and large distributors and large farming providers. So that would be number one. Um, and number two is we do have this year, uh, we've, we've reached a point where we have a very strong product market fit for a number of uh, players, including um, seed companies beyond the large multinationals, crop protection companies, and distributors. And we have a very long list of players and companies that we'd like, we'd like to contact in the US. And we need help in reaching them out. Um, we've been very successful in the past. AY is 25 employees today. We're going to 38 employees within the next 12 months. So we, we're, we're performing very strongly. Um, and in, in this stage of the company, we're looking at, uh, you know, going from the 15, 10, 15 customers we had two years ago to really uh, dozens or even more than hundred, uh, hundreds of players that are out there in the market that do trialing on the field and that have these sort of, of um, challenges that we, we talked about today. Um, we have a documented list of all of the targets that we wanna engage. Um, if anybody can give us a hand with engaging some of these players in the US, that would be very, very useful for us. Of course, uh, we could host, host a, a follow-up meeting or call for us to describe in depth which these players are and, um, and see if there's potential for, for reaching them through anybody in attendance to today's meeting. Great, well, Nick, thanks so much. Uh, to those in attendance, thanks for joining. As a, refer as a reminder, uh, the email address you see here, uh, the first letter should be N as in Nicholas, uh, but everything else I believe is spelled correctly. Um, so hopefully this is, is mutually beneficial to, to all involved. Um, Nick, thanks again for walking us through what you're up to, very interesting stuff. Um, and for those in attendance, we host these calls every Thursday uh, at 3 p.m. Central. So we do hope that you register for upcoming calls at agrifoodconversations.com. And the recording will be sent out to you. Um, so let people know if you know of anybody who might be interested in, in what AWA is up to. Uh, please do share and let other people know. So thank you all for joining us and we hope to see you next week. Thank you, everybody.